Exploring the dark side of medieval marriage customs, marriage during the Middle Ages was a far cry from the romantic ideal we often envision today. Rather than love and companionship, it was primarily a legal and economic institution, with political alliances, social standing, and wealth at the center of most unions. For many women, marriage was not a choice, but a mandate imposed upon them by their families or society at large. The reality of medieval marriage customs reveals a darker, more disturbing side of life in the Middle Ages, where power dynamics, societal expectations, and deeply entrenched gender roles created an oppressive environment for women and lower-class individuals. Here, we delve deeper into the unsettling truths behind medieval marriage and the customs that shaped it. 1. Arranged marriages. Bonds of duty, not love. In medieval society, especially among the upper classes, marriage was rarely a matter of personal choice. It was, more often than not, an arranged affair, orchestrated by families seeking to enhance their social or political standing. Marriages were seen as strategic alliances between families, designed to solidify relationships, gain territories, or consolidate wealth. In this context, love and personal happiness were secondary concerns, if they were considered at all. Young women, often still children themselves, were treated as valuable assets whose marital arrangements could elevate a family's position. These arrangements could be made when the children were mere infants, with girls promised to much older men based on the potential benefits the union might bring. The actual bride and groom often met for the first time on their wedding day, a moment that sealed their fate in a lifelong, inescapable bond. This custom of arranged marriage reinforced a rigid social hierarchy where individual agency, especially that of women, was severely limited. Marriages were typically about securing economic or political gains rather than nurturing affection or emotional intimacy. These unions placed enormous pressure on young brides who were expected to maintain familial honor while navigating an environment that often disregarded their well-being. Two, the role of the church, spiritual bonds, earthly control. The medieval church wielded immense power over nearly every aspect of life, and marriage was no exception. The church's influence on marriage customs was both protective and constraining. On one hand, it introduced the idea that both parties should give their consent to the marriage. However, the church also played a key role in enforcing the permanence of marriage, forbidding divorce, and making it nearly impossible for unhappy couples to part ways. Once vows were exchanged, the marriage was considered a holy sacrament, blessed by God and unbreakable by man. This belief placed enormous pressure on individuals to endure their marriages, no matter the personal cost. Marital disputes, abuse, or neglect were often overlooked, as breaking up a marriage was seen as a spiritual failing, not just a legal one. For women trapped in abusive or loveless marriages, the church offered little to no recourse, often advising patience and submission rather than seeking freedom. The concept of consent, while progressive for the time, was frequently disregarded in practice. Many women, particularly those in noble families, were forced into unions they had no power to reject. Although the church intended to sanctify marriage as a union of mutual respect, the cultural and societal norms of the time often turned marriage into a prison for women. 3. Child Brides – Innocence Lost Too Soon One of the most disturbing practices of medieval marriage customs was the common occurrence of child marriages. It was not uncommon for girls as young as 12 to be married off to much older men, particularly in noble and royal families where the stakes were highest. In medieval Europe, childhood was viewed very differently than it is today. Once a girl reached puberty, she was often considered ready for marriage, regardless of her emotional or physical maturity. The practice of marrying off young girls was driven largely by the desire to secure advantageous alliances before other families could claim them. The bride's youth was often seen as an asset, as it ensured she would be more malleable and fertile, allowing her to bear many heirs. However, the reality for these child brides was far from ideal. Many were thrust into adult responsibilities at a very young age, expected to run households and bear children long before they were physically or emotionally ready. The consequences of such early marriages were often dire. Young girls faced numerous health risks from early pregnancies, including a high mortality rate during childbirth. Additionally, they were often paired with much older men, further compounding the power imbalance in the marriage. These girls were treated as commodities, 
their value measured by their ability to produce heirs rather than their individual worth or desires. Four, the bride price and dowry system, women as property. Marriage in medieval times also came with a financial transaction. The dowry and bride price systems were entrenched in the economic and social fabric of the time, further objectifying women in marriage. The dowry was a payment made by the bride's family to the groom's family, essentially compensating for the cost of taking on a wife. The amount of the dowry could vary greatly depending on the social status of the families involved, and the size of the dowry could directly influence the desirability of a bride. The bride price, on the other hand, was a payment from the groom to the bride's family, recognizing the bride's economic value. These transactions reduced women to commodities to be bought and sold, further solidifying their lack of agency in marriage decisions. The dowry system also placed significant pressure on families, especially those with multiple daughters, to marry off their children quickly before their resources were depleted. For many families, the dowry system meant that daughters were seen as financial burdens to be relieved as soon as possible. Once married, women often lost any control over the dowry they brought into the marriage, as it became the property of their husbands. Widows could sometimes reclaim their dowries, but this was a rare occurrence, and many women found themselves entirely dependent on their husband's goodwill for their financial survival. Five, marital rights and domestic tyranny. In medieval marriage, the concept of coverture meant that a woman's legal identity was subsumed by her husband's upon marriage. This legal doctrine gave husbands almost total control over their wives' lives, property, and bodies. A married woman had no legal standing separate from her husband, she could not own property, enter contracts, or seek justice without her husband's consent. Perhaps most shockingly, a husband had complete control over his wife's body. Marital rape was not recognized as a crime. A wife was expected to submit to her husband's sexual demands, and her refusal could be met with violence or coercion. This made medieval marriages an arena of unchecked power and control, where the wife had few, if any, legal protections. Domestic abuse was also rampant, with little recourse for women trapped in violent marriages. Husbands were granted wide latitude to discipline their wives, and although extreme violence was frowned upon by society, it was rarely punished. The social and legal structures of the time effectively rendered women powerless within their own marriages. 6. Consent and Abduction – The Dark Reality of Forced Marriages while consent was officially a requirement for marriage in the Middle Ages, it was often a mere formality, especially for women. The concept of forced marriage was a reality for many, particularly among the lower classes. Women could be coerced into marriage through social pressure, threats, or even outright kidnapping. In some cases, men would abduct women they wished to marry, forcing them into a union that was later legitimized by local authorities or the church. These abductions were often violent and traumatic, leaving women with little choice but to comply with their captors' demands. Once the marriage was formalized, there was no way out, as divorce was not permitted. The practice of bride abduction illustrates the lack of agency women had in their marital choices and the extent to which medieval society prioritized male power and control over female autonomy. A dark legacy of control and power the customs surrounding medieval marriages were far more than just rituals of love and commitment. They were structures that upheld a deeply patriarchal society where women were often little more than pawns in a larger game of political and economic strategy. These practices reveal the oppressive realities faced by women who were frequently treated as property to be traded, controlled, or manipulated for the benefit of their families or husbands. While some elements of medieval marriage customs have faded into history, the legacy of gendered power imbalances and social control still echoes in modern-day conversations about marriage and equality. Understanding the dark side of these medieval practices allows us to appreciate how far we've come and how much work remains to ensure that marriage is truly an equal partnership based on mutual respect and love rather than dominance and control.